it's fabulous and I've just realised I've said all that and forgot to turn my microphone on. So, hopefully, you can hear me now. <laughs> Technology is just against me today. So, in case you missed the start, I was a little bit late because I went to get a cup of tea. Um, that, <laughs> that was why we're a little bit later in starting today. So, sorry for keeping you all waiting. Literally the first drink I've had uh, pretty much since this morning, so... It has been a full on day. Okay, hopefully we have now got sound. I have just unmuted it, so fingers crossed. Sorry about that, everyone. Technology's just uh, just not with me today, is it? Unfortunately. But anyway, it is a lovely, bright and sunny day in County Durham. I'm going to just turn the sound on my laptop just to make sure that we have... So in... Yeah, we have got sound. It's all good. Um, <laughs> so it's a lovely and sunny day in County Durham today. And yeah, I didn't know if you might all be sat out in your gardens today. Maybe you might be getting some sunshine. Um, so yeah, the stamp along is going to be up after today's video, obviously. We always post it onto the page. And then I'll also make sure it goes onto the YouTube channel as well. And if you haven't done so already, if you hop over to the website, which is... I can put the little text in. chloecreativecards.co.uk if you hop over onto there and sign up to our newsletter, you will get an email. The email normally goes out on a Thursday for like the stamp along review. Um, so then you'll get the video for this one and the, a reminder of the downloadable instructions. And um, we then send the email out on a Friday with the instructions for the next stamp along. So that is the plan, but we're going to be making a fabulous rainbow card today. I'm telling you all about it and I haven't shown you it yet. So this is what we are going to be making today. Okay, it is, I'll move it away a little bit. There we go. Get the full effect there. It is an absolutely beautiful card. We're going to be using the gorgeous, this new rainbow paper pad. Oh my word. You have all been going crazy for this. This is the watercolour washers paper pad. And I'm so pleased that you love it as much as I do. Because it is just absolutely gorgeous. We've got beautiful pastel colours in there. It is so pretty. Perfect for spring as well. Thank you all so much for joining me. Oh, I can see Mandy's in the garden with a cheeky side. Yeah, that sounds a good plan to me, Mandy. So... Um, I'll give you a few more minutes just to kind of join me in everything. While I've got you all here at the start and we are getting ready to get going, now we've got sound and everything. Um, it's just been one of those days, I think. Technology's just not with me today, but never mind. So, next week, next week's stamp along, what will the date be then? Will that be the 27th? I think it might be. 27th. So, next week's stamp along, basically, what I'm going to do, I have been, um, as anyone who kind of been in the Facebook group last year and things like that, I have a few problems with my back and my shoulder and I've been struggling with it recently. So, for next week's stamp along, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-record the stamp along on a day where um, my back's good so I'll be able to do the full demonstration and everything. So, what we'll do is I will actually be live next Wednesday at 2 o'clock. I'm going to put a, uh, the stamp along up pre-recorded, but then I'll be able to come back on and answer, answer any questions that you might have. So it will be like I'm teaching you a class, but I'm not actually there. But please, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments and I will come back and answer you um, after the stamp along. So that's for next week. Obviously this week, I'm very much here. I'm going to be stamping along with you and it is going to be awesome. So that is the plan, just to let everybody know. Um, so yes, so pleased that you are all joining me. Thank you so much for Deb who says she loves the new packaging. I know, Ross has done the most amazing job on the new packaging, hasn't he? He's done all the branding and everything. And honestly, when you see what we've been working on um, during since we've kind of been in lockdown and Ross has been home working, it, honestly, we've got some uh, incredible things coming this year. It's really, really exciting. We were just talking about it on the phone actually. Um, earlier today we were saying like for all it's kind of been it's been hard because obviously he's not been in the office and um with getting samples and things like that it's been a little bit difficult but it has been such a good thing so we've got so many new products designed and new goodies coming later in the year so and for next year actually so yeah really excited so it's actually been it's it's been a, a good thing that's the way we're looking at it it's a little bit um a little bit different we try to put a positive spin on it so 
we are going to be creating a fabulous rainbow card today we're going to be using that gorgeous watercolor paper pad i can see that a few people are struggling to find us but hopefully you have all found us now if you have leave me a comment send me some likes across the screen as well oh monica loves the new stamp packaging too she says she doesn't want to take her stamps or dies out i know that is the thing isn't it it's so pretty I'm trying to see if i've got some actually to hand to see if i can show you because so some people might not have seen it yet you never know this is the new packaging Okay, it is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? In the in the little um it's like a cardboard pouch, it's a it's a matte matte finish. We went for matte in the end. Very nice, very nice, very strokeable. Anyone who crafts will know what I mean. And it's got that gorgeous gold foiling on as well, so it's just so luxurious and beautiful. Okay, and see Bobby's just asked when is the next magazine coming out okay little thing about stock because we're getting lots of emails at the moment and honestly we are trying our absolute best to get back through and answer everyone and we are on top of emails and everything like that and um, the next magazine I, I haven't got a date at the moment for that because basically with the whole situation at the moment with the coronavirus and things there are kind of delays in shipping and things like that so i have a feeling that the actual launch date of the magazine may have changed slightly but i'm i'm not 100 percent sure so again hop over to the website sign up to the newsletter we always send you a link to pre-order the box kit magazine when that is coming out on sale so it, it, it will be the christmas one so it definitely it definitely won't be like in the next couple it's not in the next couple of months i don't think um but yeah sign up to the newsletter again we're getting a lot of emails about stock and things we are honestly I don't think i think we've all worked like seven days since kind of lockdown started it's been rather full on but we are all doing our absolute best to kind of get stock back in and loaded onto the website so if you are looking for anything um on the website if you go onto the product and it says it's sold out there'll be a little box next to it that says notify me when back in stock if you pop your email address into there and then you hit um i think it says notify me or something you just click the little button next to it basically and then you'll get um, an email that pops up to say that you've signed up to the stock notifications so um you will then get an email automatically when we load any stock against products now we have had a couple of emails because we've had a couple of things that have sold out quite quickly um, we are doing our best to get as much stock back in as we possibly can but a lot of our suppliers are working short staffed at the moment they've obviously got staff working from home and things like that so we are working our absolute socks off to try and get everything to you um, as quickly as we possibly can but in some cases we're not actually able to restock products in the quantities that we want to as well and on a note of stock too just before we get started i feel like i'm um, i'm just i'm going on for quite a while here but <laughs> before we get started i might as well tell you everything that i was meant to tell you or i will forget um we're getting a few requests about bringing older discontinued stamps back as well unfortunately it's not really looking like that's going to be um possible to do basically when we order products it's not like we can just order kind of a, a tens or um smaller quantities of them we have to order we're ordering in like hundreds and uh, we're ordering we have to order in large quantities because we have like minimum orders with our suppliers who manufacture them for us so um basically we pre-book our production space in advance so a lot of our production space now is pretty much booked up with um new project launches and things like that and again with the current situation that we're in it's obviously quite hard to get um to get more production space at the moment so at the moment anything that is discontinued or anything like that is probably not going to come back into stock um again keep an eye on the website if it does obviously we'll send an email out but at the moment it's kind of not looking like that's going to be possible to be honest okay then so thank you so so much for all of your comments and just see oh another comment as well fran's just asked are we shipping internationally again at the moment no we haven't reopened international shipping and um, for any of our international customers that maybe don't know what's going on in the uk so basically we have been in lockdown the lockdown has been kind of relaxed but only very very slightly we as a company um have made the decision that we're still not able to go to the post office to actually post the international orders basically all of our uk mail is picked up by royal mail in Saks. again if you're in the facebook group you will see i quite often post <laughs> the photos when the orders are going out and it is just crazy so um yes please do bear with us we are honestly doing our absolute best 
the carriers that we work with as well, there's a lot of backlogs and delays and I would hate to think that your orders and didn't actually, um, your orders were delayed or anything like that. And obviously depending on which country they're going to and even which state, it's getting a little bit more um, kind of complex as to the shipping regulations to those places. And also a lot of our carriers have put like an um, emergency tariff on top of the normal carrier costs. So at the moment, it's just not something that we're able to reopen as much as I would absolutely love to. It's just something that's not quite possible at the moment. But again, as soon as we do, we will send an email out. And of course, we will post on the page as well. So thank you so, so much for all of your comments so far. I feel like I've talked enough now. So we are going to get crafting. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera around. I don't think I've got any more questions to answer so far. I think we are looking good, which is brilliant. Okay, then. So, oh, and as well in other news i've also got some more tutorials filmed for you all so when i get those edited and start to get them uploaded onto youtube we've got some using the new stamps and dies we've got full projects i've done a bow tutorial as well because so many of you have asked for that um we have done what else we've done i've done a stenciled one uh, there's all sorts there's some men's cards actually as well men's cards again there's just uh, there's 24 hours in a day and there's just not enough hours to be honest so <laughs> i'm literally working as hard as i can to get those done and uploaded for you as well so they will be on youtube but again if you hop over at the website i'll pop the address up again at the bottom chloe's creative cards .co .uk. Sign up to the newsletter, you will never miss a thing. If we put a new blog post out with a project, we'll email you. If we've got new videos up, we'll drop you an email. So yeah, that's definitely the way forward. Okay, right then, Nancy, a question from Louise as well. Quickly, when is the next release? And Nancy, that's about the magazine. I answered the magazine question a little bit earlier, so if you watch the video back, you'll be able to see that. Um, with the next re with the next release again it's all a little bit kind of up in the air at the moment so we haven't got a definite date but it will be soon again hop over to the website sign up to the newsletter if you never want to miss a thing to do with chloe's creative cards okay hop over to the website and sign up to that newsletter because we will send you an email and you always get the news first so um yes that is definitely the best way to make sure you never miss out on a thing okay then Right, I am going to get started now because I feel like I've talked loads. So I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to give you a little walk through of what we are going to be doing. Okay, right, let me just figure this out. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so you'd think like, we are we on week seven or eight of this now? You would think that I've kind of got to grips with this camera, but I just haven't quite yet, but never mind. Okay, so this is the project that we are going to be making. Again, you can hop over onto the website, which is chloescreativecards.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash news. And then if you find Stamp Along 7, which I think is like the second blog post in on the top row, you will see that there is this project all written up, full step-by-step -step instructions. They're available as a free PDF download. You just need to click on the link and download them. And I could see as well in the Facebook group, and I thought this was an awesome idea, um, that I think it was Marie had... Um, she'd laminated them which was an amazing idea so then you've got them to refer back to which is fabulous okay then so this is the project that we are going to be making today again hop onto the blog you'll be able to get all of the details for the products i'm using and everything on there but i will tell you what i'm using as i go along okay so this is the card absolutely gorgeous we're going to be creating this fabulous 3d wreath so i'm going to kind of hold it up to show you because it is really it's a really dimensional project this one this one i think would be really nice as well do you know if you got one of those really cheap box frames you could create a beautiful kind of centerpiece in a box frame with that too which would work so so well okay so i'm going to pop this to one side so this is where this project all started okay using this beautiful beautiful new paper pad so this came out with our newest release so this came out it was just it was just the end of last month wasn't it and it has been so incredibly popular so this is our watercolor washers paper pad and it is just absolutely beautiful you can see all of the different colors that you've got in here you've got the really nice pastel shades but they are like vibrant pastels, which I think is fabulous. Apparently that's not a way to describe a pastel colour, but to me it makes sense. They're like pastels, but they've got a bit of zing to them, okay? So they are really, really pretty, pretty papers, but they look fabulous when you stamp and emboss your flowers onto them, or of course when you use them as a background as well. So basically what I did is I went through, and I have done a little bit of pre-stamping for today's, um, today's Facebook Live, 
and I've selected six different sheets of these okay so I chose this gorgeous purple one okay which is really pretty and then I chose like an orangey one okay which is this one here and then I chose a green one okay so you can see that one there and then this is like a tealy blue which is absolutely beautiful okay and then a yellow one and like a pink one okay so this is going to be um ready to create your backgrounds and i've kind of picked the colors so that they're like a rainbow so when you lay these out you've got your red your orange your yellow so i'm going to muck the order up is it green then blue i'm going green then blue okay blue and then purple okay so you can see how you've got that beautiful rainbow of colors but again they're nice and pastel so they're not too scary not kind of too in your face and too bright okay so that, that's what I did first and then I also pulled out a sheet from my background. So the background one that I chose was this one here. So you can see how it's got all of the different colours in there. So you've got the oranges, the reds, the blues, really, really pretty and it's got like that watercolour type effect to it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll start by building up our base card and then we'll um, work on the flowers and things in a moment. So I've started off with an 8x8 card blank, okay, again this is completely personal preference but I like to keep my fold for my cards at the top, anyone who's maybe been watching my videos or anything like that will notice that I do that all the time and I just tend to find that my cards stand a little bit better to be honest. So I'm going to take my mats and layers, okay, that I've already got cut down, again all of the sizes for these are on the website, so I've got my patterned piece, I've got my white square and then I've got my smaller white square to go on the top okay and then we've got a chisel tip glue pen here so this is the zig two-way chisel tip glue that i'm using and i've also got my crystallina glitter which i have in a big tub because i use it all the time okay i've got a piece of scrap card here and what we're going to do is just edge around each side of the patterned paper to start with so you just got to drag your glue pen towards it now if you run off like i just did there Please don't stress, just don't put your glitter on that bit. You can just kind of dunk your glitter into your jar and just miss that little bit out there. Okay, and then you can see you've got that nice little glittery edge. It's probably a little bit hard to show you're actually on um, on this particular paper at the camera, but I'll do my very best. Okay, so we're going to work our way around. We're going to just cover this with our crystallina glitter. Going to create a little frame around the edge of our card we're going to do exactly the same on the two squares of white this is this one okay so we're just going to work around added our little bit of glitter along each side here Same along each edge. Like so. So you can just work around adding in your little bit of glitter down each side. Like so. Okay, so we've got that lovely little glittery border around our card there so we're going to just start and mat and layer this up onto our base now so we'll take our base card this is the thing with these beautiful papers you don't know which side to use do you because they're all just gorgeous of course if you wanted to you could use a um like a um you could do it all tonely so you could do it all in the purples or the pinks as well if you wanted to so i'm just going to pop a little bit of dry clear glue just onto the back of my paper here stick that down onto our card blank so again i always like to use a like a wet glue so like your pva or your collal when i'm sticking my layers flat because i'm absolutely useless at sticking things down straight so this definitely makes it a little bit easier okay and then i'm going to pop our two white layers on the top so i'm going to use some foam pads to do that just chuck these on the back as we all know i do love a few foam pads on my projects so make sure we get plenty on there down first 
and if you wanted to as well of course you could gut the center of that patterned paper so you could just pop a die in the middle or something like that okay so we are going to take this one here and pop this one into there again a few foam pads and this is just going to give it a little bit of a lift and a little bit of dimension okay and then we'll take the backs off these like so okay so you can just see how that's all starting to come together there now so what i then did is i took a, a circle nesting die that i have again if you joined me last week this may be a little sneak peek at something that is coming very soon and i've just die cut a circle frame okay so i've taken a larger one around the outside and i've put a smaller one into the middle as well okay so what we're going to do now is take our foam pads again and just work around to kind of build up the wreath so we're going to um cut my foam pads are quite big so i'm going to cut them in half like so Okay. I do tend to use like a different pair of scissors as well for cutting up like foam pads and things like that. And I don't like to use my good scissors to do that. Okay, so I just position these around the edge so you want them to kind of just balance out your wreath. Again, we're going to be sticking all of the flowers on top of these. So you want to make sure that this is nice and supported. Okay, then we're going to take the backs off of these. I'm going to put like another layer on the top. So these are three mil foam pads that I'm using. So in effect, we're then going to end up with like six millimetre depth with the foam. Okay. So we're going to take this here and we're going to pop this onto here and just work around like so. all nicely starting to build up now so then you just quickly take the backs off of all of these okay and then we're going to put that back into the down here okay and then we're going to pop this onto here like so okay so that is kind of the basic shape of your card all nicely made up so so easy to do though so what we're going to do now is I'm going to pop that to one side and we're going to start to build up the flowers. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, this week I have um, kind of pre-done some, so I've stamped them and already cut them out, ready to go onto my project. But I'm going to show you how to make them all up. Okay, so I'm going to stamp out one more now. So basically what I did is, can you remember at the beginning I showed you that lovely rainbow of papers? Okay, so I chose six different colours. From the watercolour washers pad which is this one here okay i chose six different colors and then i've stamped onto each color three times using my clear embossing ink pad and i've embossed it in the diamond white wow powder okay so i'm going to show you how to do that now so i'm going to grab in this piece here which is that gorgeous purple paper and this is what i love about these papers when you look at them you've got so many different kind of textures and colors in them that when you then stamp your flowers onto them they just look absolutely gorgeous they're a really nice weight as well for shaping your flowers and of course for stamping onto as well and if you want to ink over the top so say you want to ink your edges or anything like that they are going to be they are absolutely perfect for um doing any of those kind of techniques too okay so we're going to grab in our anti-static bag so we always do this when we start to stamp so we're going to just dust over like so using our anti-static bag okay and then we're going to take our stamp so the stamp that i'm using is the one from the dragonfly green stamp set which is this set here okay so you can see you've got all the different designs in here so these stamps this flower that i'm using is a much larger version of the stamp that you got in the box kit five so in box kit five we gave you some flowers there was dragonflies there was that kind of thing to it but what i thought would be nice would be to have one of those larger flowers 
but so that you could then layer it up with the smaller ones too. So we're going to be using this fabulous large flower today um, and we're going to be using one of the sentiments as well. So you've got either have a wonderful birthday or you've got wishing you a birthday filled with happiness. So you can choose one of those to use on your project too. Okay. And again, if you haven't got this stamp set but you'd like to get hold of it, if you hop over onto the website and have a look on the blog, um, I can't remember when the discount code's valid till, but there is a discount code to save 20% on this stamp plate. But again, that's all on the blog. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is take my stamp and I'm going to take my clear embossing ink pad. So this is the Wow Clear embossing ink pad that I'm using. I know it's out of stock at the moment on the website. We do have them on order. Again, we're working as hard as we can to get products back to you. Okay, so we're going to ink our stamp. Lots and lots of tapping all over the image, like so. Okay, and then we're going to place this down on our beautiful paper and stamp. So I've gone for this corner here because it's like a little bit more pinky. So that'll add a little bit of interest onto our project. Okay, and then we'll lift that off. And then we're going to use our gorgeous diamond white wow powder. Okay, this is a beautiful, beautiful colour. It's a white, but it's got like that holographic kind of sparkle to it. So it looks gorgeous when you pop it onto these um the new paper pad because it kind of reflects all the colours back which works really nicely so that's that one on there okay and then I'm going to stamp another two I think that one's my ink had dried a little bit there I think it was uh, talking too long I have to say it's rather roasting in my craft room today it's the smallest room in the house and um the sun's kind of <laughs> full on coming through the window at the moment so it is roasting right so stamp this one down here and then sprinkle that over there we go that's better i'm going to stamp an extra one just to make up for that one there so we'll stamp this one here like so excess and then re-ink again and stamp another one here okay so I'm going to put that back into the jar and I'm going to heat these up now so I'm going to use my glue gun so my glue gun actually has two speeds on it so it's got a high speed and a lower speed i tend to just go to the higher speed okay so we're going to hold the heat gun still and as soon as you see that powder start to melt and change to a lovely bright white we are going to just move the heat gun over the image okay so it'll kind of when it's done it'll kind of twinkle at you and then you know it's ready to um, move the heat gun over So we've got those all nicely heated up now. I can see again there's a couple of questions about um, international parcels. So I did actually answer this earlier. So when we finished, when, and I post the video on the page, if you watch it back, I've explained it all then. Okay, because I did give quite a, quite a long answer. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to cut these out. So we're going to cut a base one out whole. So I think I'm going to use, which one? This one is the base one. So we're going to cut this one out whole. So you can just cut round with your scissors. And again, if you just move your paper as opposed to moving your scissors, you'll find it so much easier when you're cutting out. Okay, so that's that one done there. Okay, and then we're going to cut the next one out. So this one, when we cut this one round, what we're going to do, can you see how we've got these petals that are at the back? Then you've got petals that are more towards the front. So what we're going to do is cut out just the petals that are at the front of the flower. Okay, so to do this, we're going to just trim round. Like so. 
we've just take away that petal at the back so can you see that there how i'm cutting that out okay so we're going to work our way around and we are going to do this on the petals Right, so, so then you like end up with the six petals from the flower okay you can just see that there okay and see there's a couple of questions coming about the foam pads the foam pads are on the website normally we're out of stock at the moment but again if you go on and sign up to the stock notifications as soon as any stock is loaded they you'll you'll get an email about it okay so we're going to cut the other flower out here too so I'll just get rid of those you can see this question about my scissors these are tonic they're just tonic spring cut scissors i've had them for literally years though so i don't i don't even know that tonic still make them to be honest but they are brilliant if you manage to be able to get a pair okay so we're going to just trim round again so we're going to end up with like two layers with the flowers okay just trimming round Missed a little bit there with my heat gun. Terrible. There we go. Okay, so you can see you've got your flowers all cut out there. So you've got your base layer, which is this one here. So you've cut that one out whole. And then you've got your two um, top layers there too. So what I've done is I've done that on all of the different colours. So I've got my pinky red one here, okay. Then we've got the orange one, green one, yellow one, and the blue one as well. So I've done that on all of the flowers um, already, okay. So we are going to start and shape these now. And see, there's just a question coming about the embossing powder that I'm using. So I am using the um, Diamond White in the Wow. But again, if you go onto the website, click on the blog, there's a full list of materials that I'm using um, during today's stamp along. So if you have a little look on there, you've got all the ingredients on there. And you've also got a free PDF download as well that's got step-by-step -step instructions. Okay. So what we're going to do is start to shape the petals of the flowers. Okay. So I'm going to move these all to one side okay and we'll just start and do one at a time so what we're going to do is take our base layer and then we're going to take our flowers that go on the top here we're going to hold it in the middle between our finger and thumb okay can you see that there and then i'm going to take my other hand and i'm going to just curl the petals upwards okay and that then creates a little bit of shape on the flower so we're going to do that on both of these top layers okay what we're then going to do is take our base layer i'm going to take a little bit of 3d glue gel I've treated myself to a new tube as well okay it's going to take just take the seal off just bear with me a moment there we go and then we're going to put a little bit of glue gel onto the back of here oh, glue seems like it's there we go i think it's because it's new you just grab a puffy tool or something one that's all covered in glue always the way you can't find it when you need it isn't it there we go this is my the old one that i used to put the glue on with okay so you're going to take a little bit of glue gel you're going to pop that down into the middle of the flower and just start to build these up so we're building them up with the 3d glue gel so that's that one there okay so i'm just popping it on the top and giving it a little twist and rotate of the petals okay and then we're going to do exactly the same again a little bit of glue gel on the back and what i always like to do on my top layer is like pull the petals up towards you and then you can just position them down like so okay so that then creates your beautiful little flowers ready to go onto your um onto your wreath okay so i'm going to pop that one to one side i'm not quite happy with how that is in the stuck in the middle there it's because my glue gel's moved two seconds 
this happens to you at home this is why glue gel is so amazing because you can just shuffle it about and move it till you're happy with it there we go that's a bit better there we go okay so you can see how we've got that nice little head up so we're going to do the next one as well so we've got our base flower and then we're going to take the other ones as well so we're going to just curl the petals again so holding between your finger and thumb and then just working round adding that little bit of shape and dimension okay and then we're going to just start to layer this up so again a little bit of glue gel it's going to go onto there and a little bit more glue gel on the back of the next one little petals a little pull up towards you and just twist them round just till you're happy with the shape that you've got with them there we go okay so you can see how that's all starting to come nicely together now so we're going to do exactly the same on the next couple so give it a little bit of a shape so again you just curl them between your finger and thumb as you work around but these papers i honestly think this paper pad just makes this project because the colors are so so pretty okay and then a bit of glue gel on the back and position that one down there and then again we're going to pull those petals up in the middle a little bit of glue gel on the back and then we're going to just position that down okay and you can see how that one's coming together there but you can see because we're using these fabulous water this watercolor paper pad if i hold that up can you see how you've got all the different shades of purple so it makes the flower look like it's got different colors in but it's the paper doing all of the hard work for you so it makes it so so easy so i'm going to pop that one to one side and again we're just going to continue on building these flowers up again i thought i would um pre-stamp these and cut them out for you all today i thought it's a little bit boring sitting watching me uh, just cut out flowers for a little while isn't it so we're going to work round and just give that a little a little squish okay just flatten it out we're going to add a little bit of glue gel into the middle and then we're going to position that one down under there we're going to pull this up towards the top here okay like so and then we're going to put a little bit of glue under the back of there go onto here like so so you can see again how that one's starting to layer up okay and how pretty that then is looking so we're going to continue on we're going to do the yellow one next so the yellow paper that i've chosen was quite a pale one so that might be a little bit harder for you to see at home but you can see how you can just curl your petals around like so up here and you can just see how well this then is going to come together so A little bit of glue in the middle then we're going to position that one down there then we're going to pull this one up again towards the centre and I do tend to do that on the top layers of flowers I just find it gives them a little bit more lift and dimension and don't be frightened as well they are paper but they're quite sturdy okay and do you know what if you tear a petal it's not the end of the world you can always just stick it back on with a blob of glue okay you can see how that one's coming together there now too okay and then we're going to do the green one it's the last one so again i've got my whole flower cut out there i'm going to shape round pull that up towards the center a little blob of glue Porky tool, and then that's going to go onto here, like so. 
The next one is going to go on the top there. So position that down. And just play around, get the petals looking nice, but then you can see how that has all come together there. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to add a little bit of glitter under here. I've just seen a question come in. Just give me two seconds. Lynn is asking, my embossing isn't as white as yours. It's more patchy. Am I doing something wrong? No, you're probably not doing anything wrong. What it, what it can be is if the glitter and the um, embossing powder is separated a little bit. So what you might need to do is just pop the lid on your embossing powder Give it a good shake before you use it because this is the one that's got the glitter in as well as the embossing powder. So if you give it a good shake, it'll mix the glitter and the embossing powder back together so it'll give it like a more even consistency. What you're probably finding is happening is the glitter and the powder is separated. So when you are sprinkling it over, you're probably getting just glitter sticking to parts and that'll be what's making it look a little bit patchy. It could also be because you haven't heated your embossing powder long enough um, so if it's gone patchy, obviously some of it would dust off if it hasn't quite been heated long enough. Okay, now and see that Alexi has just reminded me that I haven't put the, the pin in the top of my glue. So I'm going to do that now. Thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of glitter onto these flowers. So the colour that we are going to be using is gorgeous. It is from the Sparklicious range and it is called Razzle Dazzle, okay? And it is such a pretty colour. It is back in stock on the website, okay? Where am I at with the camera? There it is. Okay, but you can see, oh, look at the colours in it. Isn't it pretty? It's like a crystallina type glitter, but it's like, um, it's more, I'm doing a terrible job at showing you that there. I'm just showing you how terrible my nails look really. But it is like a crystallina type glitter, but it's more chunky and it's got like pinks and greens in as well. It's like, I don't know how to describe it, but basically it picks the colour up from underneath too. So with this rainbow pad and kind of the whole look that we're going for today, it just works so, so well. So we're going to grab back in our piece of scrap paper. I'm going to start and pop our flowers onto here. So to put the glitter onto the flowers, literally all I'm going to do is take my PVA glue. So again, as always, I'm using the Arc Glitter Dries Clear PVA glue. It doesn't come with the metal tip. You buy the little metal tip separate. But the metal tip, it, it will honestly change your crafting. It is brilliant. It's going to enable you to get into all the detail. And as well, we get asked if you can put this tip on different bottles of glues. It has actually been designed to fit on this particular bottle um, and this particular glue is designed to flow through the tip so you can sometimes find that your glue kind of gets it's a little bit too thick and then it doesn't flow through the tip as well whereas this glue has been specifically designed for this purchase uh, for this not this purchase for this purpose even that's because i was thinking about buying the tip separate to the glue there <laughs> okay so what we're going to do now is go in with our glue and all we're going to do is just put little Got a little bit of dried glue. See, I should have put the pin in. I've got dried glue on the end. There we go. Right, so we're going to go in and just put little dots of glue just onto the top petals like so. But again, this tip really comes into its own because it enables you to do all this, this really kind of fine detail work, really. So I'll pop my glue on and then I'll try and hold it up to show you. I am a little bit worried because it is really hot in this room today so obviously don't particularly want my glue drying before I put my glitter on but we'll cross that bridge if we get to it okay so if I hold that up okay you'll be able to see can you see well, I've just put little dots of PVA there onto the flower okay so when we sprinkle our glitter on the glitter is just going to stick to where them little dots are so we'll sprinkle this over now. So this is Razzle Dazzle. I mean, look, look at the sparkle <laughs> instantly from that colour. It is gorgeous. Then you can see you've got the glitter on the flowers there. Now, when your glue dries, the glue that we're using is going to dry clear. 
so you'll find that you get the purple starting to shine through from underneath from the papers which is going to look really really pretty um, when your flowers are all dry so whatever colour sorry it's not just going to randomly come up purple on green paper didn't explain that very well there it's going to come up and show the colour from underneath so um, like on the purple it's going to look more purpley on the green it's going to look a more greeny colour on the orange it'll look more orange so that's why I chose this closer for this project because it's a bit like um like a chameleon it's going to change colour a little bit okay so we're going to do that on all of the flowers now so i'm just going to grab them in one by one put my little dots of glue into here and then we'll get that razzle dazzle on i love this color as well i use it so much it looks gorgeous if you've got any of our stencils um, and you put your stencil paste through and then sprinkle some of this over it looks really really pretty as well Um, I can see that Mary is asking, is it better to let the flowers dry before adding the glitter? Um, it, it probably is, to be honest, but you're all right. If you if you want to kind of add your glitter while the flowers are wet, of course you can do. That's what I'm doing um, to kind of show you how to do all the different techniques and things. But yes, if you've got time, you can always leave your flowers to dry and then pop your glitter on afterwards. Okay. I tend to have days, like obviously today I'm making a full card, but I tend to have days where I just sit and stamp a load of flowers, cut them out and then make a load up and then I sit and make cards the next day with them. That's what I tend to do. Okay, so you can tell I'm really concentrating now. I've gone, <laughs> gone really quiet. <laughs> so we're going to be popping our glitter under here. Like so. so you can see how these are all starting to come together now. But because we're using this glitter across all of the flowers, okay, it's going to show you how it's going to it's gonna tie all the colours in together. So it'll look really, really pretty when we, when we come to the end here. Pink one's just not behaving for me today, is it? Doesn't want to stick. There we go. Okay, so we'll get a little bit of glue going under here. Okay, and then we're going to just pop this under here, sprinkle that over, okay, and you can just see the effect that that then gives. Okay, really, really pretty. Pop that to one side. We're going to continue on. I'm going to do the next one here. So I'm going to do the tealy blue one next. But again, you can see how beautiful these colours are. Okay. So we're going to go in little dots of glue. Just adding these in. Okay, so this will then complete our blue flower. Sprinkle that one over, okay, and then we're going to do the same with the green flower as well. Just going to just dot our glue on again. You don't have to be too careful about this, you know. There's no precise art to it. Just kind of the little dots of glue. However you do them, they're going to look pretty when the glue dries down. Okay. there we go you can just see how you've got all of that lovely detail on there as well okay then so pop that to one side we're going to put this back into the jar and then we are going to grab in our base card okay and see a couple of you are saying the key's going a little bit blurry it might be when the camera is refocusing or it might be if your um, internet's buffering a little bit. So if you're finding that a little bit annoying, when I upload the video later and pop it onto YouTube, that should stop um, stop happening. Okay. Right, so we're going to grab in our base card. And what we're going to do to start with is I'm going to add some little jewels into the corner. Because I, I did this at the end when I made the sample and when I thought about it, if I'd done it at the beginning, it would have been easier. 
So I'm just going to take three little self-adhesive jibbles and I'm going to pop these into the corners like so. They want to stick. There we go. Stick these onto here. Add this into here. Terrible at sticking these on straight. I do try my best, but you know. Card mating should be fun, shouldn't it? It doesn't have to be too perfect. There we go. So you can see how we've just added the little jewels into the corner there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just put our little flowers, we're going to dot them around the wreath. So the way that I always find it easiest to start spacing is if I take my 3D glue gel again. Okay, again it gives you that little bit of manoeuvrability. So I'm going to stick the pink flower at the top, so like at 12 o'clock. And then I'm going to stick the purple flower at the bottom, so that's like at 6 o'clock. Okay. So I'm going to just put our, oops, put our glue down under there, stick the purple one under here. Again, you want to make sure though, when you're doing this, make sure when you stick them on that they're on your card blank. Okay, you don't want them overhanging, otherwise when you come to stand your card up, they'll be hanging off the edge and we don't want that. Okay, so again, if, you could, if you've got the time to let your flowers dry, I, I would do that at this point, but obviously... I can't at the moment so we'll just crack on right so that's going to go onto there like so. so you can see how we've got the two flowers stuck onto there now and then we're going to stick the yellow and the blue one on this side of course you can do this in any kind of color arrangement that you want it is completely up to you so i've got an yellow next so that's this one I'll stick that down there and then blue next to it there so you can see how that's starting to form the wreath shape there okay and then we're going to do exactly the same down this side so a bit more glue gel and then we're going to add the green and the orange one so the orange one's going to go here next to the pink and then the green round the other side two seconds let me just grab that one in the green's going to go there okay so you can see how we've then built up that beautiful wreath okay so if i bring the finished sample in you can see how we've then started to add some foliage and that's what starts to lift your card and bring it all together so i'm going to do that now okay actually i'm not i'm going to add my little jewels into the middle of the flowers first so again, this is something that I've pre-prepped just so it was nice and dry for me today. But what I've done is I've taken a little jewel and this is something that Glynis was doing on her projects and I just thought it worked so, so well. So um, you take your little jewels, you cover them with your PVA glue and then I've just sprinkled them with our Tootie Fruity Sparklicious Glitter. So then you can see that you've like created your own little orange bling stones ready to go in the middle of your flowers. So these look super, super pretty when you stick these in. So we're going to take these now, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back, so I'm just going to use that dries clear glue again to stick these down. A bit of glue on your here. And just stick them into place. And I think the orange really lifts the colours as well, it just works so, so well with this particular project. Okay, it's such a lovely colour as well, the tootie fruity um, sparklicious, because it's nice and vibrant. So for like your flower centres and things like that, especially for your summery projects. I think it's really nice. These have got glue dots on the back by the way as well. I am just putting a little bit of extra um a little bit of extra glue on there just to make sure that they are definitely stuck. It's just not quite in the centre, is it? It doesn't want to move either. There we go. It will move. <laughs> we'll do the other two there as well 
but can you see how the orange kind of lifts the colours a little bit? Just makes them look really nice and zingy and bright, I always think. So I'll stick this one in here. And then we'll stick one at the top as well. So that's all of our little flower centres nicely in place. Okay, now again, in my little list of instructions, which is on the blog, that's the wrong one, it's that one that I want to show you, uh, which is chloescreativecards.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash news. I told you that you'd need to stamp out some leaves, okay, and you needed to turn them over and glitter them on the back. So I'm going to show you this technique now, but I have pre-prepared these just so they were dry, ready for my project to do. Okay, but I will sit and cut them out with you all been getting lots of questions about how to cut the foliage out and honestly it's so easy to do i thought i'd do a little um i'd show you how to do that today so i've got my little leaf stamp here i'll stick it onto my block being very good and cleaned all of my stamps before i did stamp along as well okay so i've got a piece of heat resistant acetate here and it is really important that when what you are using for this technique is heat resistant okay if it's not what you will find that will happen is when you heat it, it'll just shrivel and melt. And obviously we don't want that. We want it to stay kind of nice and um, pretty ready to go in the background. So this is heat resistant acetate. I've then taken an antiseptic bag. You want to give it a good little dust over, like so. And then you're going to take your stamp. Now I think, from memory, I think it was 11 or 12 leaves that I told you that you needed to stamp and emboss. So again, we're going to use that same embossing ink pad. The WOW um, Ultra Slow Dry and Clear Embossing Ink, okay. Someone else is reminding me about the pin. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Everyone's keeping me right today. Pop that back in the top. Do you know what it is? It's when I'm crafting, I just stick it in my mat and forget about it. Okay, <laughs> so clear embossing ink pad. We're going to take our stamp and we're going to ink it up. Okay, now stamping and embossing onto acetate, I've noticed a few questions in the group, so I thought I'd address them while we're doing this stamp along today. Okay, you're going to take your stamp, you're going to place it down, okay, and you're going to press. Now with acetate, you don't need much pressure at all, just fingertip pressure. What you might find as well is if your ink pad's too juicy, it's going to make your stamp slide. And obviously we don't want that. We want the stamp to kind of stay on the acetate. So if you find that you've got a brand new ink pad, or maybe you've just re-inked it, if you um, stamp it off once onto some paper and then stamp it onto your acetate, you might find that a little bit better. And... Um, so that that could work for you or if you've got a slightly older ink pad try it and see if it works you know i'm sure you're all like me and hard ink pads i'm terrible for it like i've got a black ink pad that i don't know how old it is but i keep it because it, it comes out gray and then you know it's a good gray ink pad to have i don't know why i'm like this but anyway we're going to take our opaque bright white super fine embossing powder which is back in stock on the website so if you haven't done so already hop on over and have a look i think the large jars might have gone but we've definitely got the smaller jars in stock okay and just see julie's asked about do you clean your stamps after every use chloe and do you ever use wet wipes okay look i'm going to put this embossing powder on and heat it up because otherwise i'm going to talk and it's going to have dried so it helps you put it on the right place there we go then you pop your embossing powder on okay and then you're going to heat it up so to heat it up i tend to hold mine like mid-air so I'll show you this now. Give me two seconds. I'll grab my heat gun. Okay, so I'm going to heat that up nicely. So I'll just quickly answer this question about cleaning stamps. So Julie's asked, do you clean your stamps after every use, Chloe? And do you ever use wet wipes? Okay. Honestly, no, I don't clean my stamps after every use. To be honest, it's quite, um, not rare. I wouldn't say rare, that's a little bit harsh. But I don't clean them all that often, if I'm being honest. When I do clean them, what I do is I chuck them all in the sink with some um, washing up liquid. And I just give them a wash in the sink with warm water and washing up liquid. If they're particularly grubby or if they've got glitter or embossing powder or something on them, I tend to um, use a little toothbrush or a, like an old nail brush and give them like a little rub over, just give them a little scrub. And I just leave them to air dry naturally. And that is the best way to clean your stamps. 
you can use baby wipes as long as they are alcohol free baby wipes that is really important because over time the alcohol can react with the photopolymer and it can cause your stamps to degrade which obviously is not what you want and the same can happen with solvent inks and um, ink cleaners so for baby wipes if I do use them they're always alcohol free but I tend to try and avoid using them if I'm being honest because what you can tend to find is you get fibres that stick to the stamp from the baby wipes so then you don't get quite as clean a stamped image so I hope that that answers your question. Diane is asking are your acrylic blocks flexible? Yes they are they bend which is brilliant because then it means you don't need to put as much pressure on okay I'll try to show you that there we go <laughs> okay right then so you're going to stamp 12 of your leaves uh, 11 or 12 it's in the instructions again on the blog and then you're going to stamp and emboss them in the opaque bright white and then you're going to flip it over okay then you are going to take your art glitter dries clear pva glue again incredibly important that this is dries clear i can see that sean has just asked is there a right side or a wrong side of the acetate um there is no right or wrong side to the acetate that we sell obviously i can't speak about other acetates they might say it otherwise but the one that we sell there's not a right or wrong side okay so we're going to use our dry clear glue and we're going to turn over so we're like working on the back okay we're working on the smooth side we're going to take our glue and we're just going to cover over the leaves like so now this can look as messy as you like on the back it's obviously going to look awesome when you turn it over So then we're going to take our grasshopper glitter which i've buried somewhere on my desk it's here so grasshopper is a really nice vibrant green i love it for foliage because it just works so so well so we'll take that off there we go okay but then when you turn that over at the moment you can see it looks quite milky because the glue hasn't dried but when your glue dries you're going to get the green popping through and against the white it just looks really nice and fresh okay so pop that one over to one side over here we're going to chuck our glitter back into the pot and then we're going to just start to cut out the leaves okay so i've noticed quite a few questions on the page about um how to cut out your foliage okay or oh, people are saying that they're not quite as confident i don't feel that they're quite as good at cutting out but honestly it's so easy you can just whiz around the edge like so you don't have to be careful at all because you're on the heat resistant acetate when you stick this on your card i know you can see the edge there because i'm holding it really close to the camera to try and show you but when you pop this on your card you honestly you will hardly see it okay so i'm going to do that on each of these so i'm going to just trim around and i use heat resistant acetate so much in my card making and i just think it's such a fabulous thing the thing that started me off with this as well was we had um so some people have been following the page from the very very start okay um we had like a fir branch stamp which was gorgeous and i wanted to use it behind some flowers but i was like i didn't really fancy it in an ink pad i wanted it embossed so i did it on paper and card and it didn't quite look right i thought oh i'll try some heat resistant acid here and i was like oh my word it looks incredible because then you can really kind of start to build your foliage up and it builds that depth and dimension on your projects so Beverly's, sorry, I'm just reading a question there. Beverly's just asking, can you tell me when your glitter jewels are arriving? I've been trying for weeks. I don't understand what you mean, Beverly. Everything that we've got on the on the website, we haven't got any jewels or anything on order. The ones that I've just used on the project are just any jewels at all that you've got in any colour, covered with PVA glue and then sprinkled with the glitter. So then you can change change the colour of them. I hope that kind of answers your question there. Okay, so we are going to work around like so, just roughly cutting these out, and then we're going to start to arrange these behind the flowers. So that one, we'll just keep on going here. Okay, and then we've got a few more here that I'm just going to quickly cut round. So, I'm going to just quickly whiz round with my scissors. You don't have to be kind of too careful, Addy, and be quite rough. Okay. 
when you trim these out. So just work around, cutting these out nice and quickly. Okay, so I'm going to add this in. Here we go. So that one and then the next one here. Right. So that's all of our lovely green foliage, nicely cut out, okay. So we're going to grab in our gorgeous project here. I'm going to start to arrange these in. And just say there's a question come in from Alison. Oh, and please remember to watch along, Alison. Don't worry, the video will be up on the page later and on YouTube. Can I ask, when heat embossing onto vellum, can I use any vellum or does it need to be heat resistant? Vellum's a little bit different to acetate. Um, so with vellum, you just have to try it very much, without getting too technical, it depends on how it's manufactured. So some vellum's kind of manufactured in layers and it, it kind of, when you heat it, it bubbles. Um, whereas with acetate, that's a plastic. Okay, so that's um, just something a little bit different. Okay then, so we're going to take our 3D glue gel, okay, and we're going to start and stick our foliage in behind our flowers, like so. So I'm going to trim this little bit off at the bottom, and then we're going to just tuck these in. So blob of glue on the bottom, and then tuck it in behind like so. So we're just going to kind of follow the shape of the wreath. I'm going to work around first. I'm just going to add one in behind each one to start with. I'm going to obviously go back in and add, add more. I think this is definitely not one of the, the kind of less is more cards, is it? It's a, a more is more, <laughs> definitely. So we're going to pop this one into here. So I'm just working around and these leaves are really nice because it's kind of like a bit of a curved shape to them. So when you start to add these in, you can start to kind of play around with the shape a little bit and it makes such a big difference. Okay, so that's going to go in there. And then I'm just thinking, did I pop some? Yeah, so I'm going to, what I did, right, so this is a little bit different here. So where you've got your foliage, so I've basically stuck it on top of that circle that we've put on the base card and where the flowers are. But what you can do to add a little bit more dimension is, because this and this is the reason why we've got a large ring to start with, we can pop them in underneath as well. So you can see how that's then going to add more dimension because it's going to have some foliage at the back and some foliage at the front that's going to um, kind of it's going to give it a little bit more dimension to your finished project. So we'll add a little bit of glue. I'm going to trim a little bit more on the bottom of there. A little bit of glue gel on the bottom. Sorry, I'm going to have to turn this around so I can see where the form is. There we go. But then can you see how you start to get your leaves starting to overlap? So it starts to look really, really pretty then. So we're going to continue going. I'm going to add this into here. Should I put one? No, I'm going to stick to the outside. Am I the only person that ends up talking to myself when I'm crafting? Because I do this all, <laughs> all the time. I end up having a full-on conversation with myself as I'm, uh, as I'm crafting away. Okay, so I'm going to put this one into here. So quite nice there. I'm going to just continue working round. So all I'm doing is just tucking, tucking these under here, like so. So I'm going to do another couple in here. Okay. And then just have a little look where the foam pads are. So 
tuck that in there. Okay, so you can see how this is all starting to come together now. I'm going to put another one in here, I think. Let's put that one down there and then tuck one in here. So I think I've stamped 12, but I've actually only used 11. Okay, just to be, just to be awkward, you know. But what I do is I've got a little box next to me here and any foliage that I end up with left over, I keep. And then it's just good to go for another project. So you can see how that started to build that beautiful wreath shape up okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit more stamping and embossing onto acetate so i'm going to show you what we're going to be making so we're going to make some of these little kind of um they're like little flower sprays berry sprays they are really pretty whatever they are okay so we're going to make some of those next so again you're going to take some heat resistant acetate i think i've stamped 12 again just to make sure i've got plenty okay and then we're going to take the little stamp so this is from the spring foliage stamp set and it's like the little it's like little i don't know like berries or little buds maybe you could make it into either really couldn't you, you could put some little red berries on for holly okay so we're gonna ink up our stamp and then we're gonna stamp this down on our acetate so again keeping one hand on the stamp at all time and then just use my other hand to lightly press you don't want to be too heavy-handed because if you put too much pressure on it it's gonna move on the acetate and if you like a smudgy image okay we're gonna use that opaque bright white super fine wow powder again and then we're gonna sprinkle that over cut off the excess and we'll have a bit of embossing powder or something on there never mind we're gonna cut it out anyway so it doesn't matter we're gonna go back into the jar and then we're gonna ink uh, not ink up heat up heat up the powder Okay. there we go so you can see how that then looks and then what we can do i'm going to just roughly trim around the edges there and then i'm going to take my dries clear glue again with that fine tip that i should have put the pin in but never mind i'm going to put some little dots of glue just onto the little like berries or bits of foliage like so I'm going to put the pin back in there we go pins back in and then i'm going to use my unicorn sparkle sparkle is just glitter so this is a gorgeous color again i've got mine in a big tub because i use it all the time but it's like a goldy pinky kind of color but again it's one of these crystalline ones so whatever color you put underneath is going to show through so i'm going to sprinkle this over i'm going straight in with my finger look at the different colors you get in this so <gasps> Isn't it gorgeous okay so i'm going to sprinkle that over and then you can see how you get all of the different sizes of glitter clinging to the branch okay so i'm going to put that to one side again so ideally you want to leave those to dry really so we're going to grab them back in and again these are the easiest thing to cut out because you can literally just go in with your scissors and really roughly trim around the edge so Trim around. I am trimming quite a bit off the bottom of that little stem, like stem as well. Okay, so I've cut, I'll, I might as well cut them all out because it's quite quick, isn't it? So just whiz around with our scissors, trimming these out. I always get worried about these stamp alongs because I always feel like the cutting out is dead boring and it takes me, <laughs> takes me ages to do. But we'll just kind of whiz round and cut these out i know it's not the most exciting thing for you to watch at home but it's an essential part isn't it of the project so just trim around here this one and then we'll do another couple of but honestly if you've got this spring foliage stamp i would be adding if you haven't got it already adding a pot of this unicorn sparkle glitter to your collection because oh my word it's just lovely and it works so well on this particular stamp i think cause you've got all the different sizes of glitter in there it kind of gives you this it's like a um like a 
I like multi multi-dimensional that's not the right word but it gives you like a texture which I think works so so well on your projects and obviously because you've got all of the different colours in there reflecting so like looking at these now I can see blues and greens and pinks it just works so so well so we'll quickly trim around the edge okay and then we'll do another a little bit more here okay so we're gonna grab in sorry if i've just moved the camera there i think i've just caught the tripod with my wheel <laughs> okay so we're going to start and tuck these in now into the into the wreath so again the same technique using your 3d glue gel okay and we're going to put a little bit of glue at the bottom and i'm going to tuck that in behind the flowers like like so it's a little bit fiddly doing this but trust me it is worth it okay it's going to go in there okay so we're going to stick couple in here as well so i'm just wondering actually if maybe he's putting them in that way oh that's quite a nice look like a match stick a one in there try and stick it underneath this is the thing with your foliage you can kind of put as much or as little as you want on and obviously because your glue gel is still wet when you're kind of popping your um putting the foliage and stuff in it gives you that time to manoeuvre your flowers and manoeuvre the wreath and things so you can kind of then arrange it how you want it to look if that makes sense so a little bit more glue onto here tuck that in there so can you see the difference actually probably a good point to show you can you see the difference that makes by adding that in as well as the little green leaves it's the little things that sometimes that make such a massive difference to your projects i always think so I'm going to put this one in here, stick that under there, one in there, under the pink bit, and then you can always pull that around, okay, and then you can go in and add a little bit more if you want to as well, so I'm going to put, I'm just wondering, should I add a little bit under here, a little bit there, maybe so that'll look that looks nice i'm gonna put a little bit in there too oh, i'm gonna to get carried away now this will be me for the rest of the afternoon flower arranging on my card <laughs> this one in here okay and then should we just tuck one under here yeah we'll tuck one in there that'll look quite nice tuck one under here i'm just thinking a little bit up there might be nice might not Oh, that's a good description, Lexi. It's like the Aurora Borealis. I like that. Very good description, that one. Okay. So, we're going to pop that into there. I bet this would look awesome on black card as well, that glitter. Okay, so I've left. I've got two left over, so I've only put ten in. But you can see what a difference that then makes. Okay. So, the next little bit that we're going to do is we're going to do our sentiment ready to go into the middle. So, I've got two little circles, again, that I've just die cut from white card. I'm going to grab in our sentiment stamp, which I've, I've buried it somewhere on my desk again. You know, I always start out ever so tidy and then I end up with um, stuff everywhere. Just give me a few minutes till I just um, grab my sentiment stamp. I've got bits of acetate everywhere here as well. There we go. Okay, we're going to grab in our sentiments. The one that I've gone for is wishing you a birthday filled with happiness which again is from that lovely dragonfly dream stamp set okay so i'm gonna dust my smaller circle with my anti-static bag and then i'm gonna ink up our sentiment sentiment stamp could do with a bit of a wash i think it's got a bit of glitter on wonder if we could wonder if the other sentiment would fit on here just we'll go to have a wonderful birthday instead Okay. Right. Ink up our stamp. Lots of tapping. We're going to place that down and press. Lift that off. And then we're going to take our Wow Metallic Silver Super Fine. 
wow powder. We're going to sprinkle this over. You can see how that's going to heat emboss nicely onto there. So we'll quickly heat this up. Put that powder back into the jar. Use my heat gun. Again, you shouldn't really heat on a stamping mat, but never mind. Okay, so that's nicely heated now. I'm going to take a chisel tip glue pen and I'm going to take my crystallina glitter. I need my scrap paper back. <coughs> oh, I just took the lid off that glitter. I think I've just breathed some of that, <laughs> some of that in then. Ooh. Right, okay. I'm going to trace around the edge of the circle using our chisel tip glue pen. I'm going to cover that with our crystallina glitter. You can do that very well there. Just going to keep going around the edge. Like so. Like so. So I've got a little glittery edge around our cinnamon. We're going to use glitter around the edge of our, our larger circle. So I'm going to use our glue pen. That's looking good to me. Okay, then dump that into the glitter and see how we've then got the little glittery board around there. It's really hard to show you with the white part of the crystalline glitter. Right, then we're going to take a foam pad. It's going to get stuck under there. And then this is going to go straight into the middle of our pad. Gonna do a bit of a cheeky double layer of foam pads on here. Okay. And then just drop that into the centre. Okay, but you can see how that has then completed our beautiful finished project. So we've got all of that glitter on there, we've got all of the papers as well, and we've got that fabulous sentiment. So if you maybe haven't got this stamp set at home, but now you've seen how to use it and you think, oh, I have fancy giving that a go, hop on over at the website, but have a look on the blog first, because there is a discount code to get 20% off this set of stamps. It is time limited though. I can't remember the date, but it's, it's a couple of days after the stamp along, I think. So please do have a little look on there, okay? So I'm hoping that you have all really enjoyed making this project. I'll be hopping on over to the Stamps by Chloe Facebook group a little bit later to have a look to see what projects you've all been making because it's always lovely to see um, everyone's different spins on them and all the different variations in the group. It is always so, so nice. And what I tend to do is um, on, so what day are we on today? I'm completely lost off with the days. It's Wednesday today, isn't it? So it is um on a thursday morning i tend to put a, a post up onto the facebook page just with the youtube links and the blog links and everything for the project and i also tend to put a few cards that are being posted in the group on there as well so be sure to have a little check back onto the page tomorrow i'm going to turn the camera back around there we go hopefully you can all see me again now so i really hope that you have enjoyed this week's stamp along so we've done this gorgeous little rainbow card okay really really pretty using the watercolor paper pad so all of the beautiful colors are all out of that beautiful paper pad again i think i've answered my questions and uh, answered any questions pretty much as we've gone today um, I noticed there are a few about shipping. Please do watch the video back when I pop it up onto the page because I answered all of that kind of thing at the beginning of the video. I so hope that you have all enjoyed today's stamp along. So I will see you next week. But as I explained at the beginning, I'm struggling with my back and my shoulder a little bit at the moment. So next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-record the stamp along so i'll put the video up at two o'clock on wednesday next week but the instructions and blog posts and everything will go out as normal can i also just remind you all to bear in mind because i didn't actually realize this until last night it is a bank holiday on monday as well so if you are ordering products for the for next week's stamp along they might not necessarily get to you in time for wednesday with the bank holiday and everything that's going on at the moment so 
um, the video of course for next week will be up on the page and I'll make sure it goes onto YouTube as well but I really hope that you have enjoyed today's little sample along and yes we'll have a brand new project for you next week we're going to be using some new goodies next week um, so we're going to be using the rose mallow flower, flower next week and the geometric background stamp as well so that'll be a really nice project to have a go with and then I think what we might do is try and do the clematis flower the week after because i did promise when we launched new products that we do some stamp alongs with them and now everyone's kind of getting them home and getting them to use that would be um amazing that we could if we could do that so i hope that you have enjoyed today's stamp along if you are maybe new to the page and this is the first one that you've watched if you hop on over to the blog which is chloe's creative cards.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash news if you have a little look on there you will see that there are full step-by-step -step instructions as to how to make this project and there's also a materials list as well and there's that 20 percent off discount code for the dragonfly dreams stamp set um, if you want to shop any of the products, of course, you can do on our website, which is chloescreativecards.co.uk. All of the products are on there. That gorgeous paper pad's on there. We've got all of the new releases as well, and they are all in stock. And if you're new to the page and would like to um, give us a little follow, you can follow us on Facebook, which is obviously where you are now if you're watching live, Chloe's Creative Cards. Instagram, again, Chloe's Creative Cards. We've got some awesome Pinterest boards that I'm going to start and get updated as well. Um, and that's Chloe's Creative Cards again. It's all, it's pretty much the same across all social channels. <laughs> and then um, YouTube as well, which is where I'll pop this video when I'm finished. And of course, please do check out the blog and website too. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's stamp along and I, um, I'll i see you, well, I'll, I'll kind of see you again next week. Again, <laughs> um, yes, we'll have a brand new project and I'm super excited. So please do, if you haven't done so already, hop on over to the website and sign up to the newsletter and then you'll get your materials list and everything in advance. And you'll also get um, emails if we have any special offers, if we have um, any new products coming out. Like last weekend, we sent an email out about the half price Christmas offers that we've got. So if you are Christmas crafting, definitely have a look on the website we've got some awesome bargains on there so hop on over and have a look but i hope you've enjoyed today's stamp along and i can't wait to go and see your projects in the stamps by chloe grew so i'll see you again soon bye everyone